Hi, and welcome back to the channel today. Well, today we are going to start the video a little bit differently. It is, uh, I believe, 7 o'clock in the morning. Temperature dropped down to 27 degrees last night. I believe it's right at or about 30 degrees right now. Yeah, a little bit under. Anyways, what I want to do today is I want to talk about my beehives. I want to talk about my beehives on the front row versus my beehives on the back row. If you haven't guessed it, I want to talk about hive heaters. The red hive is at 70.3 degrees and heating. The green hive is at 72 degrees and it's uh, in standby mode. 72.4 on the white hive and it's in standby mode. 69.4 and heating on the blue hive. 69.5 and heating on Juno. 71.7 and heating on the purple hive that will shut off at 72 degrees. 72.2 and standby on the Crynoch bees and 71.5 on the Sage hive. The rest of my girls back here in the back are in non-heated hives. This is the black hive. This is Space Force. There's Coast Guard. They're hating it a little bit. There's uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines. They're all doing well. We have a we have a dead bee on the front, but that happens. They do bring out their dead in the wintertime. Heated or not, it happens. We lose bees, and, and there you go, and there you have it. But uh, today, I want to talk about my heated beehives. Let's get into it. All right, well, it is a cold morning out here. The geese are just now landing on the lake. I wish I could show it to you. It's a, it's a beautiful sight. But anyways, like I said in the, uh, in the intro today, what I want to do is I want to talk about my heated beehives and whether or not I believe it's wrong to heat your beehives. Now, there has been some conversation out there on YouTube lately where it's been said that heating your beehives is flat out wrong. And I just want to say publicly that I disagree with that. Now, am I telling you to heat your hives? I am not. As you know, by being on my channel, you understand that I do not tell you how to do your bees. I just let you follow along and watch me do bees. You learn from my successes and you learn from my failures, but ultimately your bees are your bees. And I believe that you have the same goal and intentions that I do, and that is to keep your hives healthy and happy and productive. So with all of that said, let's talk about my heated hives and uh, what some of the the ideas are about having heated hives and whether or not it's wrong or just different. I believe it's I believe it's just different. Um, a lot of folks worry that if your hives are heated, your bees are going to fly out in the middle of winter and freeze to death and, and, and not make it back into the hives. And I can say that the bees, once they hit the landing board, based on my, my observations and empirical data, I mean, I've been doing this for four seasons now, going into my fifth, that the bees will come out to the landing board. They do understand what the temperature is outside when they get there, and they'll run right back into their hive, no different than if a bee broke cluster to go out and do a cleansing flight, walked out to the landing board, realized it's warmer in the hive, flies out, does their cleansing flight, or drops off the dead and flies directly back into the hive um, where it is warm and they know that the temperature inside the, inside the hive is, is, is a lot warmer than it is outside. Are my observations that having heated hives, and I've got eight of them, my entire front row is heated as opposed to my back row, which is not, that the, the front row, the heated hives, go through fewer resources over the winter. They don't need to eat as much of their, their stored food in order to generate heat for the hive. Now, it sounds kind of counterintuitive. You'd think that they would, they would just sit around and eat. They're not doing that. They don't consume resources that they don't need. Bees are kind of good that way. And that's, uh, that's how it works in my heated hive. In the back row, my bees are going to consume pretty much every, every bit of resources that I've given them to make it through um, the winter. Now, it's important to understand that my hives are not heated to 95 degrees or 90 degrees or what the requisite temperature is for the bees to, to uh, be able to walk around with their brood sitting in the middle just openly. Um, these hives are all heated to an ambient temperature of 72 degrees. Uh, that means that the, the, the hive temperature throughout the entire hive is at 72 degrees, but the bees will keep it at the 90, 95 degree temperature with a small cluster of bees, but not all of the bees in the hive, um, over the brood in order for the brood to, to uh, hatch and, and, and become part of the, the bee population inside the hives. Now, of course, this is all based on, on my experience and my information um, that I've gathered over 
over the last four seasons and again going into my fifth. Um, something else that is is different about my heated hives or that I've noticed with my heated hives are that in the spring these hives on the front row are stronger than my non-heated hives. They have a bigger population of bees build up inside of them and they are ready to go right when spring hits. These girls are out and they are collecting the nectar um, that those girls are not doing yet because they have not built up the population necessary to go out and do that. Um, generally my heated hives need to be split sooner or supered sooner so that, uh, so that I don't have swarms. Which brings me to, why do I do this? Well, I do this because I like my bees to be happy, I like my bees to be healthy, and I like my bees to be productive. I am a backyard beekeeper, and uh, I am not a professional beekeeper. I don't think that this would be something that, that you would do on a professional scale. Um, however, I do know that a lot of professional beekeepers with, with thousands of hives, I just saw a video the other, other day, they will bring their hives into a structure in order to keep them warm. I just saw a video the other day where a beekeeper, I believe up in Canada, brought 1,300 hives into his into his workshop, his, his shed, his bee barn. Um, and there you go. His goal is to keep his bees from freezing and from having having hive losses so that he can get out there in the spring and and fill the hives with, uh, with honey. So with all of that said, let's talk about innovation. I do this because I'm an innovator. It's what I do. I don't I don't always go by the rules or the rules that some people believe exist at the time. I am always looking forward and trying new things. Sometimes I succeed, sometimes I fail, but where would we be without innovators? Uh, think about honeyflow.com. They built the flow hive and when they first did that and they came out with their mechanical uh, flow frame that was all plastic, there were a lot of beekeepers, a lot of master beekeepers out there in beekeeper communities and clubs that said, you can't do this, this is wrong, this is going to hurt the bees. Actually, that controversy is still going on, but we all pretty much know by now that the, the flow hives are a great invention and probably the greatest innovation in beekeeping in the last 100 years. Without innovators, we wouldn't have people like Langstroth who, who, who invented these, these boxes that all of us use today. I'm sure that when he did that, uh, people were telling him, you can't do that. Your bees are gonna freeze. What do you mean you're gonna make your bees uh, create foundation, store their honey on frames? It's, it's wrong, it's not going to work. It's not like their natural environment. You are wrong. I'm sure he had to deal with a lot of that. The bottom line is, is that he was looking forward, he wasn't looking backward, and he was not abiding by the status quo. We have people who created the Lands Hive. We have people who created the Long Lang Hive. Uh, even Jim with his bee barns. These people look forward, and let me tell you, the, the the Vino Farm Bee Barns are probably some of the best hives that I've uh, that I've used. And I can also tell you this: they really don't need to be heated. I heat my bee barns um, because I like to keep my bees warm and comfortable in the winter time. Um, that's just that's what I do. But I can tell you this: they will do just fine without a heat lamp in the bottom. They've only got a 25 watt bulb in the bottom, whereas these hives right here next to me, the old Langstroth hives, they have two 50 watt bulbs down in the bottom, a heat diffuser, the screen bottom board, and then their boxes. All of my hives have a hive pillow on top to control the moisture, um, and the moisture that uh, comes down inside the hive, the condensation, specifically in the non-insulated boxes, that is used by the bees inside the hive, so I, don't, I do not have to worry about moisture killing my bees. They actually use the, the, the water and they don't have to fly out and find any. So with all of that said, it is my opinion based on my empirical data that I have in my bee yard over the last four seasons going into my fifth, that a heated hive is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing for me. Am I telling you to heat your hives? I am not. You raise your bees the way that you raise your bees. You do what feels right for you because I know that you have the same goals as I do and that goal is to is to raise healthy, happy bees, right? Um, so with all of that said, I wanna make sure to uh, ask you to hit the thumbs up if you like this video. If you have something to say, by all means, please comment. And I can tell you this up front that I have answered every comment that's ever been posted to me since I've started this YouTube channel. Let me tell you, that's a lot of comments, um, but I will continue to answer all of the comments that come into me, um, regardless of whether or not I agree or disagree with your comment. As long as you are uh, respectful when you post a comment, you're not going after other people and you're not trolling. If you come on and tell me that I'm stupid and I'm an idiot, I'm probably not gonna respond to your comment. I'm probably going to remove you from the channel. If you just openly disagree with some of the information that I've provided or some of my opinions on what I do, I will always entertain your, your, your comment. I will leave it out there for others to see. I do not filter my 
comments, they hit the minute you drop them. And that's just the way that it is. I believe that an open exchange of information is the way that we grow the art, the science of beekeeping. So with all of that said, again, like my video if you like it, give me the thumbs up. If you have something to say, by all means, please comment. I will read it and respond. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do me a favor, take a moment, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell to be notified of my new content. I try to drop a video every Friday. We try to keep it light and have fun. With all of that said, be happy. I've got to go to work and get warm. It is, it is cold out here. Very cold. Take care.